good evening for the md exam going students as discussed in the previous video crrt is one of the important question in the theory exam in this video i will try to cover the topic under the following heading which is required to write the theory question what is it what are the indication what are the modalities of crrt equipments used how to give the prescription and what are the common complication first is crrt it is continuous renal replacement therapy one form of renal replacement therapy some textbook have mentioned this as continuous kidney replacement therapy both are same mainly almost exclusively used in the acute kidney injury patients first we will see a short introduction when we take the acute rrt acute renal replacement therapy in the setting of acute renal failure that can be classified as the following first is the intermittent hemodialysis in this we will be giving the dialysis for a intermittent duration for example 4 hours 3 hours 6 hours second one is the continuous renal replacement therapy where renal replacement therapy occur for almost 24 hours third is peritoneal dialysis fourth is hybrid therapy where intermittent hemodialysis prescription will be modified and few modification in the prescription lead to a prolonged duration of therapy under which comes the slow low efficacy dialysis and all so here first we will take the crrt what are all the indication the indication of dialysis in general is same for all the modalities what are the indication it can be divided as clinical indication or laboratory indication laboratory wise refractory hyperkalemia refractive metabolic acidosis and with respect to clinical indication severe volume overload advancing uremia all the uremic manifestation uremic pericarditis uremic coagulopathy uremic gastritis all the indications of dialysis forms the basic for indication of any acute renal replacement therapy and why to prefer CRRT CRRT is mainly preferred over intermittent hemodialysis especially in patients of hemodynamic instability whenever the patient BP is low because the rate of fluid or solute clearance is very slow here in cases of CRRT compared to intermittent hemodialysis and in patients or situations of acute brain injury where you doesn't want much fluctuation in the mean arterial pressure there you can prefer CRRT over intermittent hemodialysis there is no hard and fast rule that we have to select CRRT only it is preferred since studies have been done which showed the benefit is more with CRRT than with intermittent hemodialysis and in condition where there will be severe hypokalemia and the patient might be on many a times on vasopressor support because hemodynamic instability is there so in this kind of situation crrt can be preferred over intermittent hemodialysis other than that all the indications of dialysis remains the same for all forms of uh, renal replacement therapy in an acute situation what are all the modalities to understand the modalities of crrt two concept have to be clear first is diffusion and convection what is diffusion diffusion is nothing but movement of solute from higher concentration to lower concentration this is better shown in this image over here See here there is a higher concentration of urea creatinine for example the uremic toxins on this side dialysate site dialysate fluid will be flowing there is lower concentration of urea and creatinine so what happens by diffusion from higher concentration it will come to the lower concentration area this is called simple diffusion which is the basic in case of hemodialysis and what is convection by definition it is the process whereby solutes pass through membrane pores dragged by the fluid movement you are giving some pressure fluid is getting removed along with the fluid the solute also moves away it is almost dragging this is the basic for filtration so this is one 
schematic diagram to show the hemofiltration. See here we are giving the pressure. Out of the pressure, the fluids are moving toward through the pores. During the movement, these solutes that uremic toxins are also dragged and coming to this side. This is called filtration. What is the advantage of this filtration? The removal of the middle molecular weight uremic toxin is better. Uremic toxins can be classified as low molecular weight, middle molecular weight and the large molecular weight. The middle molecular and large molecular weight clearance is somewhat better with the filtration. This convection method, convection occurs in hemofiltration. So this is just another diagram to show what is the difference between this hemodialysis and hemofiltration. Hemodialysis basically the primary mechanism is diffusion. In hemofiltration the primary mechanism is convection. See from area of higher concentration it is diffusing into the dialysate fluid which is the area of lower concentration. Whereas what happens in hemofiltration we are applying some kind of pressure, hydrostatic pressure. The water is being pushed out along with this the solute also goes into the negative side. This is filtration. Basic primary mechanism is convection. So this you have to be clear. In hemodialysis also convection occurs but to a very lesser degree. That's why I am discussing only the primary mechanism. Suppose if we combine both the modalities, diffusion and convection, how to do it? This side you give the just a minute. This side the dialyzer is there, blood is coming. Here dialysate is circulating in the opposite direction, so there is diffusion occurring. You apply more pressure. So the fluid will be pushed into the dialysate component. Basically water is being pushed into this side where convection also occurs. This is filtration. This is hemodiafiltration. So coming back to the modality here. First you have understood the concept of diffusion and filtration. I hope it is clear. Diffusion occurs mainly in dialysis. Filtrate convection. Convection occurs in hemofiltration. Second one is historically to take blood from the patient, arterial line and the venous line. Both are previously used because once we take blood from the artery, the pressure is high, no need to use the pump. We will take the blood from the artery through the vascular access and return it to the vein. So that is called the arteriovenous, arteriovenous line. That nowadays it is not being used. Both the, to take the blood to the machine, the venous blood is used and the blood is being returned to the venous site only. So artery nowadays it is not used. Only we are taking blood from the vein and returning it to the vein. So based on the which vessel we are taking, again the nomenclature changes. For example, if we take from the vein and return it to the vein, it is called as continuous veno-venous hemodialysis. Previously, the terms like continuous arteriovenous hemodialysis and all used. Now, the only venous, venovenous is being used. So, combining these two, diffusion, what is the modality of the clearance occurring and from where we are taking the blood, the nomenclature comes like this. As I told, only currently venovenous is being used for the vascular access. The modality can be continuous venovenous hemofiltration convection is the primary modality first second is continuous venovenous hemodialysis 
similar to intermittent hemodialysis we are using the dialysate fluid mainly diffusion is occurring that is why it is called as continuous veno venous hemodialysis if we combine both the modalities if the dialysis diffusion also occur by pressure we are pushing the fluid also out that is continuous veno venous hemodialysis will hemodiafiltration and the last one is slow continuous ultrafiltrate removal here only we are removing the water from the patient we are not giving any clearance that modality is called as continuous or slow continuous ultrafiltrate removal which is called shortly as cuff i hope till here the how the nomenclature of this modality came i hope you are clear what is the advantage of this hemodia filtration or hemofiltration is middle molecular clearance is better the uremic toxin middle molecular clearance is somewhat better in the hemofiltration so most of the crrt machine nowadays we are using this both modality dialysis plus filtration all occur in inside a single filter only that is why it is called as continuous veno venous hemodia filtration we will see few points in detail about these methods continuous veno venous hemofiltration here is the dialyzer or the hemofilter blood is coming blood is going out we are pushing some pressure by which water is removed from the patient along with that solute also removed here there is no need for dialysate fluid because no diffusion is occurring only patient patient blood is coming patient blood is going back to the patient no need for the dialysate fluid as occur in dialysis so what happen if we remove a higher rate of fluid from the patient patient goes for hypotension because we are removing water from the patient so what is the solution for it we will be replacing with some fluid to the blood only so we are giving some fluid so the removal can be there like fluids are removed along with the uremic blood of the patient and this being return to the patient for example if we want to remove 3 liter you give around 3 liter over here it mix with the blood and 3 liter will be removed by this we are achieving the solute clearance that is urea creatinine is being removed no dialysate fluid is used some fluid we are using that is called as the replacement fluid what is the advantage urea creatinine and uremic toxin being removed and the patient blood volume is maintained and whatever amount of uh, what water we want to remove from the patient that can be also achieved so that's why no dialysate fluid is used if i give the fluid before the filter it is called as pre filter fluid pre filter replacement fluid if i give after the filter this will be going to the patient and the mix with the patient body blood and return to the fluid uh, filter then it's called post filter so it can be pre filter replacement fluid or post filter replacement fluid and then ideal situation approximately 25 ml per kg per hour can be removed so we need that much amount of replacement fluid to achieve this kind of clearance second one is hemodialysis this is similar to a normal intermittent hemodialysis where filter is there blood comes and goes from the patient to the dialyzer and on the opposite side we will be rotating the dialysate fluid so what happens there is a occurrence of diffusion similar to the hemodialysis intermittent hemodialysis here the ultrafiltrate up to 2 ml per minute can be removed per hour approximately 120 ml per hour can be targeted in an ideal situation 
here no replacement fluid is required because we are just removing the ultra filtrate no need for replacement fluid because we are removing ultra filtrate at a lower rate so what happens if we combine both the things in cvv hdf basically it is a combination of the previous two steps so what we need we need dialysate also for diffusion to occur we need replacement fluid also for the hemofiltration to occur and which modality to use out of three modalities the advantage of hemofiltration and hemodiafiltration is middle molecular and large molecular weight clearance is better <coughs> no study has proved superior superiority of one modality over other almost all are same but in most of the icu and current clinical practice we prefer hemo diafiltration because both dialysis way diffusion modality and convection modality both are being used so better clearance for that most of the places hemo diafiltration continuous veno venous hemo diafiltration is being used what are the equipments which are required one is crrt machine another one is blood circuit from the patient we have to place a dialysis catheter either in the femoral vein or jugular vein. Preferred site is jugular vein. If the patient is very sick or not able to insert the catheter over here, femoral vein can be preferred. And the blood circuit from the patient, it will through the multiple tubes, the blood will be taken to the dialyzer, that is the filter. Here it is called as hemofilter and written back, this is the blood tubings. So blood circuit is required, vascular access is required, CRRT machine. What is the role of this machine? This machine through various pumps adjust the dialysate fluid compared to the hemodialysis machine. It have to supply replacement fluid also. And along with that, this have to take care of the dialysate fluid. Replacement fluid can be pre-filter or post-filter. Before the filter, you can give the fluid and remove the fluid through the hemofilter. Or after the filter, if you give, it goes to the patient. From the patient, it again comes to the filter, there which it was removed. So this is the image showing the CRRT machine. Multiple pumps are there. Hemofilter. Since the process occur for a longer duration of time patient body temperature have to be maintained so blood warmer will be there replacement fluid will be there so this is one extra thing compared to the intermittent hemodialysis machine pump for the replacement anticoagulation some machine have this anticoagulation pumps this is the schematic diagram to make you understand Hemo diafiltration. So here is the patient. From the patient, blood is coming. And it is going to the hemofilter. Where similar to the dialysis, the dialysate is rotating here. So through diffusion, the diffusion is occurring. Similar to the hemodiafiltration. What is the extra there in the hemodiafiltration is this one the replacement fluid replacement it will be given pre-filter most of the time this is called as pre-dilution why it is called pre-dilution before the blood entering into the filter we are diluting it so some replacement fluid is entering so we can remove more water by giving some pressure so with the pressure the blood is being filtered so what is occurring convection is also occurring so diffusion is also occurring, convection is also occurring, then blood is being given back to the patient. CRRT have either pre-dilution or post-dilution. This you, like the prescription depends on the nephrologist. A medicine resident should be aware this pre-dialysis and post-dialysis can be adjusted. And one more thing they have mentioned is anticoagulation. This I am going to discuss in the subsequent slide. I will show mention uh, when I discuss about the anticoagulation here the dialysate pump the nomenclature changes here is called as effluent pump 
because the dialysate is coming along with the patient replacement fluid is also being removed then it is called as the effluent pump what are the prescription to be given to start the CRRT modality to be used for example continuous veno venous hemodia filtration I want to give so what we need we have to tell about the dialysate flow we have to tell about the replacement fluid how much to give also what is the anticoagulation used Anticoagulation can be regional. Regional means only in the dialysate circuit we are going to give. That is citrate. Citrate will be given as soon as the blood comes out of the patient. So it forms the anticoagulant action. As the blood returns to the patient, calcium will be given to neutralize the citrate action. What is the advantage? Because uh, only in the circuit we are giving the anticoagulation or it can be systemic heparin can be used low molecular weight heparin can be used or the newer ones can be used which are given parentally so at least you have to be aware citrate and heparin are the anticoagulation if you use citrate see here it is mentioned over here citrate the green color one here citrate is given as the blood enters the filter it is having the anticoagulant action so anticoagulation reversal is given at this side so what is the advantage while the blood is going inside the patient the patient won't be having any coagulopathy effect what is the disadvantage sometimes citrate might enter into the patient body it might cause metabolic alkalosis those are the complication and with respect to heparin if we give heparin there is a systemic anticoagulation effect advantage is no need to adjust the citrate rate and we have to pick the citrate rate also at what rate we are giving at what rate we are neutralizing blood flow rate on an average 100 to 250 ml per hour just you have to remember we have to fix the blood flow rate also compared to intermittent hemodialysis the blood flow is usually slower we usually keep around 150 ml per hour or 100 ml per hour dialysate flow rate we have to fix at what rate the dialysate have to rotate in the opposite direction fluid removal rate because we will be giving the replacement fluid that fluid have to be removed through the hemofilter that rate have to be adjusted at least for the medicine resident you have to know that these are all the prescription modality we have to give in uh, crrt prescription what is the crrt dose the CRRT dose is defined by just to remember since dialysate is also blood is rotating in one direction along with the replacement fluid and another side dialysate might be rotating in case of CPV HDF hemodiofiltration how much amount of fluid being removed including the dialysate including the replacement fluid how much fluid is being removed that is called the effluent effluent of the waste water this include the dialysate also so that is called the CRRT dose ideally it have to be 25 ml per kg per hour on an average basis the prescription varies from each and every patient depends on the hemodynamic stability what indication we are giving and then Overall, you have to know just the dose depends on the how much is the effluent rate. Effluent is nothing but amount of water plus the dialysate plus the effluent, uh, sorry, replacement fluid that being removed per hour. So this is the CRRT dose. And one more point you have to aware is the filtration fraction. On a simpler basis, what is it? It is nothing but how much blood entering the hemofilter and how much ultra filtered being removed. Ultra filtered is nothing but water being removed. So that is the filtration fraction. If we remove more than 20 percentage, there is a risk of clotting because we are removing excess water. What happens if you remove excess water? There is a risk of hemoconcentration, thereby it gets clotting. In gross, I have told basically it is the plasma flow. This much in detail they won't ask. Just remember two important components CRRT dose depends on the effluent outflow. Ideally, it have to be 25 ml per kg per minute. There is something called as filtration fraction.
and this image just to show the what are the replacement fluid composition so these are all the replacement fluid composition it comes as calcium containing crrt solution calcium free solution and all so when to stop crrt once we start crrt we have to monitor the electrolytes 12 hourly bp vitals have to be monitored continuously the replacement fluid have to be adjusted if we are using citrate the citrate level or coagulopathy action have to be assessed aptt ptinr those things have to be monitored once the patient attains the hemodynamic stability patient can be converted to intermittent hemodialysis or the hyperkalemia acidosis those are resolving and the bp is improving that is the time crrt have to be stopped and switched to intermittent hemodialysis and what are the common complications most commonly electrolyte imbalance can occur acid base imbalances can occur since we are using replacement fluid citrate is being used so these kind of imbalances are more common hypokalemia hyponatremia they are prone for infection since the blood is being taken into the extra corporal circuit whenever there is a breach in the sterile procedure it might lead to that even though hypotension is rare but still that can occur Coagulopathy can occur since it is occurring for over 24 hours. Hypothermia can occur. So these are all the important complications. So we have seen what is CRRT, indication, modalities, how the nomenclature being used, equipments, what are all the things to mention for a prescription and important complication so this is all about crrt this is not clearly given in harrison or any standard textbooks i hope this video is helpful to write a theory question in the next video i will discuss about aka thank you